Live from the Student Union on campus, this is Goldmine Live. Your weekly all-access pass inside Charlotte Athletics is brought to you by Ortho Carolina. Proud to present the 2018 Charlotte 49ers football season. Bojangles, it's bow time. Harris Teeter, where 49ers fans shop for groceries. University Eye Associates, excellence is eye care. And by Wells Fargo. Charlotte 49er fans, show your pride with a customized Wells Fargo debit card. Stop by your nearest Wells Fargo or visit Wells Fargo Car Design Studio online to learn more. Now, here's your host, the voice of the 49ers, Matt Swearad. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Goldmine Live here at the Student Union this week. It is that time of year again. Football season is upon us, and we'll kick things off on Saturday at Jerry Richardson Stadium against the Fordham University Rams. And we're joined, as always, by head coach Brad Lambert. Before we welcome Coach back for the season, I want to welcome our newest member of the IMG Niner football family. That's Al Wallace, a former NFL offense uh, Offensive lineman, 10 years in the NFL defensive lineman. I'm sorry, Al. Yeah, uh, what, you replaced our old offensive <laughs> lineman, which was Kevin Donnelly. And uh, glad to have you. You're glad to be here. Excited for some 49er football. Yeah, welcome, man. Thank you. We, we keep getting big guys next to me, though, man. You, you guys, Kevin, you. Yeah, all, <laughs> we we recruited big we sit guys. down to take our pictures every day. We yeah. just have to sit down. He's so darn big. Yeah, we'll but, see if uh, he can play a little bit still. <laughs> might have a couple snaps there left. A little <laughs> eligibility left. Hey, Coach, uh, it, it's a fun time. You're, just, you're finishing up camp. You've got another, another few days before you finish things up and, and get ready for the opener. A uh, fun time of the year. It is. Uh, you know, you get into camp in August. Uh, you, start, you start smelling that grass in July. And then you finally get a, uh, go out there in, in August and practice and, and do what we all love. Uh, you know, it's, it's guys put in a ton of work from January 1st all the way to August 1st. So, uh, finally get out there and, and, you know, run into each other a little bit. It's a lot of fun. And now the last couple of weeks you've really been into honing in on Fordham and your, your first game. And, and so it's just a fun time of year. I uh, had a pep rally the other night uh, on the field. A lot of students came out. Uh, cheerleaders were out there. It's had a really good event. So it's, you know, it's that time of year, and we'll fill up the stadium and go out there and run into each other. It's going to be a fun season, a good schedule. You start with Fordham this weekend. And what is it like this week going into that first game? Because you just mentioned you've been hitting each other for practice. You had some scrimmages against each other. But now it's the first week, the first real game. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it's a little bit tough in college football because we're the only level of football who doesn't do some sort of preseason scrimmage or game. So you're always trying to protect your guys, but yet you have to get live reps. You know, you just have to go out and play the game. So you're always – you're always concerned about that. But, uh, and this year's, you know, we uh, got a new staff at Fordham, so you're not for sure what you're going to get. Uh, and that's another piece in there that, you know, you watch as much film as you can on Fordham, their, their, their team, their players. And then, you know, a uh, coach came over from Yale. So you're trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do, but you don't really know until, until the game kicks off. So that's always the unknown factor. So you're trying to kind of cover a little everything and, and make sure your team's ready to, to make plays in certain situations. Getting into the season, so many new members of your coaching staff, too. Got a new offense coordinator, new defense coordinator. Uh, how's it all been with, with, with the camp and getting ready? It's been really, really good. Uh, I, I just like the way our staff has really come together uh, since all those changes were made back in, you know, January, February. Our guys have really come together well and, and are working extremely well together. But this will be a game, you know, our first game together as a staff with some new guys in there. So, uh, but that's college football, right? That's NFL football. You know, you have changes and, and you have to adjust. And, and uh, But I've been really pleased with how all the guys have worked and how they're you know, the relationships that they're developing with each other and with our members on our team. And so uh, they've really done a, a good job of that and a tribute to the kind of men they are, you know, just good men. And that's that's always where we start when we look at a guy and bring him into the program is, you know, you got to have a, you have good people to start with that can relate to the players and each other. And I think we've done that. And I'm really excited to watch this group perform together. Coach, how does that impact the players on the field about their excitement for new coaches, new offense, new defense? Everything around them has changed. How do you keep that excitement about 49er football in that locker room? Well, I think that's been a good thing. Uh, you know, the change has been good, and I think there's some rejuvenation in there, and, and uh, the coaches have done a good job of, you know, putting this scheme in or that scheme, but uh, bringing a good attitude every day. You know, that's what we've ha hammered our team on, coaching staff is – you know, one day at a time, what kind of attitude do I show up with? And I think that can be infectious throughout your whole team. And so 
uh, it's really been good. I've been really pleased with through spring ball, then through the summer, you know, the different phases you go through, and then now you're really honing in together. I think uh, our attitude's been really good, and there's been a lot of enthusiasm. Practices have been energetic, uh, and so that's really important that as we go into uh, game one. Five new coaches, uh, you know, a lot of experience on, on the new guys coming in from winning programs, bringing that into your program. It's huge, uh, and a lot of head coaching experience on those guys as well, you know, whether it's Coach Selfo or Coach Spencer or, or uh, Coach Montgomery. You know, guys have been head coaches before, so they got a lot of good ideas. And we've changed a lot of things since January. You know, we've, you know we're, today's our day off. Uh, we've always taken Sunday off and practiced on Monday. You know, we changed that. That was something that Glenn really wanted to look at, uh, Spencer, and they've done that for years at Oklahoma State. So, uh, you know, just visiting with different guys and bringing different experiences helps us, and we wanted to change. We said, hey, look, we're not going to sit still, and, you know, we're, we're moving forward, and, and uh, so we've made a lot of changes, but, uh, but it's been good. Uh, the staff has really, really, like I say, worked extremely well together and, and brought on some good ideas, so there's been a lot of change. You know, with the change and taking Monday off, you know, it's one thing in the offseason. What's it going to be like come, you know, next week when you take the Monday off? Do you have in your mind how the week's going to go? Oh, yeah. I think it'll, we, we did it one year when I was at the University of Georgia way back. Uh, we did it. I like it. It's a pretty good schedule for a coach. Uh, you got to make sure you're taking care of the players. And it's more of a an NFL-type schedule, you know, where you play the game. You go ahead and, you know, do some, some running, lifting, training room, those type of things. Uh, the day after the game and then the second day off is your day off so it's more of an nfl type schedule and there's a lot of college guys do it uh, so i think it'll work out well and i think it's a really good schedule for a coach you know because he can really hone in on monday he's got all day monday to set his game plan and really analyze what we want to do uh, for that week what do you envision the rest of this week being for you going up to that game against fordham well, we're on a normal week. Uh, we started yesterday, and, and, you know, we'll go hard Tuesday, Wednesday. Those are your two work days. Uh, you know, we kind of backed off of them a little bit here at the end, you know, get their legs back up under them. Uh, it's been a, been a hot camp. It's been a lot of work, so the guys have really done a good job. But Tuesday, Wednesday, heavy work day. Thursdays, polish it all up. Friday, walk through, and then, you know, show up Saturday, play the game. Coach, how do you communicate? the tempo of a live game to some of those young guys who are new to this roster who will be seeing college football for the first time. How do you explain how that tempo is going to yeah. ramp up come game day? You can't. You know, we've been talking to them about their warrior meter, you know, how high it's going to have to be uh, because, uh, you know, when you talk to the freshmen, I, I really uh, like Johnny Pittman's a guy who's a corner, is a true freshman. Uh, he's come in and he's having a really good camp, but he got in that first scrimmage. And he goes, wow, coach, the speed of the game is a lot different. And I said, wait till we get to the game. You know, it's, it's just a scrimmage against your teammates, but it gets amplified when you get in the game. So there's really no way to do that, Al, because we don't have some sort of preseason game or scrimmage. So game one, they're, they're going to, you know, they're going to get thrown in the fire and, and have to adjust to that. And, you know, that's why you like to introduce guys you know, a little bit at a time if you can. But some guys, you know, this guy get in there and get a feel for it because it's a, it's a lot faster. Veteran team, though, a lot of returning starters, especially on defense. So you got a lot of experience coming back, too. We do. We've got a good number of guys back, you know, on that defensive front. Uh, and then secondary, Ben DeLuca, Eddie Roll, uh, guys like that, uh, Denzel Irvin. They've played a lot of football. So uh, we've got some guys that, you know, can, can bring those young guys along. And they've done a good job of that in camp. And that's been a big another big push of ours is, you know, how well do you build a relationship with a teammate and how do you go out of your way to do that because you got to count on each other, you know, as we move into this game and know that, that they can count on me and I can count on them. And so the old guys have done a good job of that. Our offensive line has got a lot of starts back, so uh, that's helped. Uh, Benny LeMay's back. Uh, has played a lot of football for us. Uh, Warpay Kofa, Mark Quattlebaum, those guys have done a good job with, with the young guys and been really pleased with that. They've done a good job. Well, our special guest coming up later on today is one of the senior offensive linemen, Chris Brown. He'll be joining us a bit later in the show. We're going to take our first time out right now. It's our first goal mine live of the year with head coach Brad Lambert, also Al Wallace with us this season. I'm Matt Swaride, back with more in a moment here from the Rotunda on campus in the Student Union. This is Gold Mine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event, and now is the best time to buy. You ready for this, Junior? Yeah, I think I can handle it. No pressure. That's just my favorite boat. Boom. <laughs> Make summer go right with Ford, America's best-selling brand, and get our best deal of the summer. 0% financing for 60 months on F-150. 
During the Ford Summer Sales Event, get zero for 60 plus 2,800 cash back on select F-150s at your Carolina Ford dealer. Welcome back on Go Mine Live, everybody, here at the Student Union with Al Wallace and head coach Brad Lambert. Matt Sorad with you. The 49ers take on the Fordham University Rams on Saturday. 6.05 kickoff at Jerry Richardson Stadium. It's going to be a, a fun day to get out there again, start tailgating, and uh, get back to football season. Coach, it's an exciting schedule uh, you've put together, and we don't want to get too far ahead. We don't want to talk about week two. We've got business to take care of on week one, <laughs> yeah. but if you drive by the stadium right now, there's, there's more bleachers going up getting ready for uh, the big game against Apps. So how do you get you guys, you know, you, I know it's the first game they should be focused in, but there is that big game in week two, so to take care of business in week one. Yeah, you just have to uh, throw on the video of uh, North Carolina a t last year. So somebody you're supposed to be, like, it's it's your attitude. Like, that's why we talked about since January 1st, you know, what attitude do I show up with every day? Like, that's the, the beautiful thing about football. We only guarantee 12, 12 opportunities. So we have to be ready to play every week. And if you're not, I tell our team all the time, everybody has good players. It doesn't matter if you're – Fordham or Tennessee, like everybody has good players. And Fordham had a player last year drafted in the fourth round. Uh, they got a couple of guys this year that are on watch list from a national standpoint. Uh, they'll have guys that are, are the NFL is looking at to draft. Uh, so Fordham has good players. And so you turn on the film and watch how successful the staff was at Yale, uh, different things like that. It doesn't take long to figure out, you know, for our guys, hey, we've got to be on point game one you know, one day at a time every day. And so that's been our emphasis. And, you know, we, we can't afford to overlook anybody. So we've just been focused on Fordham. And, you know, that's the – there's been a lot of excitement around. Uh, Mike Hill's brought in a lot of good things. We're excited about getting started. But there's no reason to get ahead of ourselves. You know, hey, it's, it's handled handle today. And how do I become a better player today and make our football team better today? And so that's been our focus. And, and our guys are pretty zeroed in right now. You've talked about change and accepting some change and doing some things differently. One of the things that you have kind of broken away uh, from your norm is the team captains. You've gone now four captains for the entire season. They're all juniors. Talk about how that kind of came about and how these four players were selected. Once again, you know, talking to new guys on our staff and the way we do things. And, you know, I had kind of always done it week to week. Uh, guys that are doing well in the classroom, representing the university well, playing well. That's kind of how we had done captains. So this year we decided to vote, and I really wanted to focus on that summertime. So we did it around the spring game. Uh, those guys, you know, were elected captains and had a good summer. And they kind of led us through the summer, and that's really what I was targeting, uh, having those guys lead us through summer school. And they did a really, really good job of it uh, for good individuals. Uh, you know, they're just good people that, that uh, got the respect of their teammates. And so that's been a good thing for us. But once again, it was another change we made. And, you know, just looking at, hey, how can we do it different? How can we do it better? And, and so that was the whole point. Coach, with a, such a new program, is that part of building a culture here at Charlotte? It is. Uh, you know, everything you do, you, you, you know, we haven't played football long. But uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to build something here. And I felt like I told our team in January, that, that we've laid a great foundation. Like, we've a lot of good people. Like, we've got a lot of good facilities. A lot of people did a lot of work to, to lay the foundation for this program. Now it's time for us to build the house, right? we got to start putting walls up. And so we got to take it to the next level. And, and that's where we are in this program. And, and that's part of changing. You want to, hey, look, let's, let's do this different this year. And let's do this and look at this and see how this works. And, and go from there and try to, you know, try to build this house and something that will – last long after we're gone you know you just want to establish something that's built on on high character and doing things the right way and and uh, you know going from there you've talked to in the past couple of years of getting to the point where you've got that depth where you can go two and three deep and i know you like the senior class right now you got a great group of junior class uh, players that'll be seniors next year and uh, the group now that you're red shirt and going forward is, is a nice nucleus to, to build this program going forward. Yeah, we've done a pretty good job of that, trying to red shirt the right guys, but play some of them. Um, you know, we have a new rule this year. Uh, we have a new red shirt rule that's going to affect all of college football, which is a rule we've been lobbying for for a long time. Uh, and that's a rule where a guy can play in four games throughout the season and still red shirt. Uh, so it'll allow you to not have to maybe leave a guy in the game that's somewhat injured or there's a question you know you're just like okay I can't take him out because I don't want to burn a red shirt on this guy um, 
I might have a discipline issue. I have to sit a guy down. Well, I don't want to play the freshman. I don't want to. You're always where you're. You're always in that. What's best for the player and what's best for the team, and so you were always fighting that as as the head coach trying to figure out what's best for everybody. And now that kind of relieves that, and you can, you know, you can put true player safety at the forefront of it and say, hey, I don't have to leave this defensive lineman in the game for 70 snaps because I don't want to burn this guy's red shirt and I got this backup that's hurt. So that kind of relieves you of that. So there'll be more freshmen playing this year across college football and, and it relieves some of those. So it's a really good rule and I'm really excited that we have it. Coach, does that kind of depth uh, just create more competition? It more, does. More fighting for those those top positions? It does, and that's what you want to do. Uh, Al, you've been around a long time. You want to create competition at every position, whether you're talking about the quarterback or the nose guard. I mean, you want guys out there on a daily basis competing. And, hey, ultimately, I can only run 11 out there on each play. And I tell our guys, if you want to play, you know, play really well and be one of those 11. And, and so hopefully we're creating that competition and, you know, at the wide receiver position, for example, you know, got a lot of good young players. You know, they're out there battling, battling hard. They're fighting hard. They want to be on the field and play and impact the game. And, and there's a lot of different ways to impact the game, but we've created some competition at, at, at certain positions that I think has been good for us. And it's nice to know that you've got that in your back pocket and that not even the safety issue. You get to, you know, week 9, 10, 11, some guys uh, maybe a little tired. You want to get them a couple extra reps. You're not going to burn a guy playing them once or twice at the end of the season. Plus, they get that experience going into camp. Yeah, there's a lot of benefits, uh, you know, to it. it. The other thing I think that's critical is it keeps a young guy really engaged. Always before, you know, when you made that decision this week uh, that, hey, we're probably going to just redshirt you, you'll go to the scout team. You know, it's hard for a kid to stay locked in. You know, I mean, he's – you know, he's got his schoolwork, but he's not really playing. He's been playing up until this point. He's been playing every snap at whatever school he was at, right? He's been the man. And so now it, it has a, you have a chance to really keep the guys engaged. Like yesterday's practice, we kept all of our young guys out. We practiced a little extra, just them, because we want to keep teaching them the system, and we'll do that throughout the year. And I think it has a real chance to help a, help a player all the way around academically, athletically you can keep him really engaged in what's going on and you know it's got a chance he's got a chance to impact the game coach will take a time out and let you have a break as well we're going to bring in chris brown one of our senior offensive linemen our special player guest today on uh, goldmine live we'll come back with chris in a moment this is goldmine live on the charlotte img sports network it's the ford summer sales event and now is the best time to buy you ready for this junior yeah i think i can handle it no pressure that's just my favorite boat. Boom. <laughs> Make summer go right with Ford, America's best-selling brand, and get our best deal of the summer. 0% financing for 60 months on F-150. During the Ford Summer Sales Event, get 0 for 60 plus 2,800 cash back on select F-150s at your Carolina Ford dealer. The Student Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Ortho Carolina, the official team position of your Charlotte 49ers. This week's Ortho Carolina Student Athlete of the Week is Ben DeLuca. DeLuca's a junior safety on the football team from Orlando, Florida. Last season, he led the nation in forced fumbles, becoming the first 49ers football player to lead the nation in a statistical category. He has been named the 2018 Conference USA preseason all-conference team heading into the season. Away from the field, he's a communication studies major with a GPA of 3.0. Ben DeLuca, the Ortho Carolina Student Athlete of the Week. This has been the Ortho Carolina Student Athlete of the Week, brought to you by Ortho Carolina, the official team position of your Charlotte 49ers. Welcome back to Go Mine Live, everybody, here at the Student Union today, our first show of the season, first game of the season coming up on Saturday. That'll be a 6 o'clock kickoff against Fordham at Jerry Richardson Stadium. And we're joined now by senior offensive lineman Chris Brown. Out of Charlotte, went to Vance High School. Chris, great to see you. And... Uh, it's going to be a fun night, of course, on, on Saturday against Fordham. You guys get the season started. But for you, at your senior season. Uh, what's this, this been like for you now? It's, it's last opening night. Man, it's been – throughout the summer, it's just been a real – it's been surreal feeling just thinking, like, man, this is my last go-around. Like, going through summer workouts, like, this is my last summer. You know what I'm saying? Going through camp, like, this is my last first day of camp. So, it's been – it's been kind of – it's, it's got me worked up. I'm trying to keep it, like, at a, at a, at a plateau with it. So – I'm excited. I'm really excited. I think we got big things in store. 
Got four returning starters on the O line. I mean, like this group. Uh, tell us about it. What makes you guys special? I feel like we have a very unique group up front. You know what I'm saying? We have a monster at left tackle, Cam Clark. Like he's going to have a dominant year. We have returning guy with Drake, Dan Drake. You know what I'm saying? He's playing guard, me returning. I think the experience is what's going what's gonna to help us a lot this year. I feel like we're very experienced. We've seen various defenses and scenarios. So it's just going to come down to execution. What has Coach Selfo brought to this unit? I heard Cam Clark at uh, Media Day talking about how he's just brought such a difference in, in how you guys approach the game. Your blocking scheme has helped you guys a lot. I think number one is the tone. Like, he – like he's not gonna have sympathy for you. He's gonna have empathy, and it's gonna like that. That right there sets the tone. Like he's not gonna miss a beat. You get hurt. He's not gonna miss a beat. Like he's gonna care for you. But the show must goes on. Like and it, and it brings that mentality. Like you can't just dwell on things. You have to have that next play mentality, and you have to finish. I'm all about competition and great defensive lines breed great offensive lines, vice versa. Talk about some of the guys you go against and you face every day, and Tyreek Harris and High Smith, those guys that get after you all. Man, blocking our defense, you know what I'm saying, with the different schemes, I think I think Alex Hosmill is probably – he's going to be a guy to watch. Like, throughout college, he's probably one of the hardest guys I've had to block in the game throughout practice. Like, he's he's a monster on the edge. Like, I'm really excited to see what our D-line can do, what he can do. Um, Timmy Horn, another big inside guy, like, he's going to always raise your level. Like, you know, you going against Timmy, you got to bring it, like – that's with all of them. You just got, like, they push us and we push them. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, we're going to put the same uniform on. So we got each other's back on Saturday. Got some pretty good backs behind it, too, you're blocking for it. Tell us about them. Oh, Benny, Benny, um, Aaron McAllister, Calvin Kemp, um, all great guys. They got great vision. They're going to hit the hole. It's fun blocking for guys like that because you know they're going to go out there. They're going to fight for the extra yard. If we don't get our job done up front, they're going to they gonna, – take that 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 um, upon themselves and get that extra yardage so it's fun blocking for those guys looks like too the offense will be more multi-dimensional more options different things coming at the opponent they excited about that oh yeah i think i think that's going to help us personnel wise i think we have the personnel to switch that up like that and it's going i feel like it's going to catch some defense by surprise early on in the season because we haven't done that before of the younger guys you've been working with there's somebody right now that that you're really impressed with um, coming in tight end Jacob, um, he he plays so physical. Like he's probably one of the most physical freshmen I've I've seen since I've been here. Just like his poise, his presence out there on the edge, right there beside us at the tackles, he's really played well th throughout this camp. How do you set the tone as an offensive lineman? You come out right away, run blocking. Is that something that you guys really look forward to? Oh, uh, we have to establish a run. That's gonna open the game up. For everybody else, if we get out there, we do our jobs and we establish a run. So establish a run is number one. And you just got to go out there and hit somebody in the mouth and finish. That's setting the tone. You set the tone like that and the game gone, it's going to follow through for you. Our guest is Chris Brown, senior offensive lineman for the Niners. Chris, uh, Coach talked about camp and how, how hot it's been this summer, You know the work you guys have been putting in uh, every day, showing up and getting it done. But what's it been like? Because it has been a warm summer. It's, uh, you've had some rain issues where you're trying to get your practice in, but you're getting all your work in. Yeah, it's um the sum the summer puts a test, you know what I'm saying? It's a test for you. It's like how how am I going to respond to this heat? You know what I'm saying? Like, cause the heat does so much to your body, it does so much to your mind. Like, how are you going to respond to that? So I think us having that heat is going to help us. The summer is really going to help us throughout the season, cause we've seen it, we we pushed through it, we learned how to work work through that. So, and then with the rain, and the rain delays, that, that happens all the time. I remember coach telling us a situation where they had the game they had to wait three hours. So it's really just staying on your toes with those random delays, and you can get easily, you can get easily um, unfocused. But you gotta stay focused and just keep it on right there. As you get to, to game week now, the first one of the season, what's some of the things you guys are talking about amongst yourself in the locker room and uh, in your dorms at night? I know you're excited about the game, but you know, being a senior, one of the leaders in this team, uh, you know, what are some of the things you guys are talking about right now? Um, number one is not taking Fordham lightly. I feel like a couple of games last year we had that like man we gonna roll over them guys and we seen that what happened last year and T just thinking that oh just because they're A and T you know what I'm saying we gonna just gonna do what we do and then you see how that worked out for us so really the the topic just been like stand on top of things like make sure like don't take these guys lightly let's play them how we would play anybody else in our conference like anybody else that's ahead of us like keep keep a foot on the pedal. 
Chris, a, a lot of offense and defensive line is about attitude. It's about effort. Uh, going into this season, what do you look at or what are your goals for the offensive line um, as a personality? What do you guys see as your signature? Uh, I want when people look at the O line, at Charlotte O line, I want them to think like that's a tough group of guys. Like they're they're gonna get their job done, and they're gonna do it hard, and they're gonna do it long. You know what I'm saying we're not we we're not gonna give up on plays. We're gonna finish. You know we want to limit the limit the number of t TFLs and sacks we give up this year, and um, everything else take care of itself. Well, being a Charlotte guy, Vance High School, it's been special to get to stay and and play college football in your hometown. A lot of family and friends going to be there this uh, this opener. Oh yeah, I always have problems with that with the tickets. We get like four tickets a game, so I always have to turn away guys, turn away family, whatever. But I got some extra tickets a game, so I'm gonna have a lot of people there this week. That's gonna be fun. Hey, what do you guys do? Like, it's a it's a close knit group. I know your old line buddies so, you know, away from the field. It's to just enjoy yourself a little bit, get away from the game a little bit. We like the grill. Do you really? Yeah, we really like the grill. I feel like. We got some guys on the team that can really make some good dishes. Man. We've talked like, about that in the past uh, on this show with some guys that can cook. Who's the best one? We got different guys with different things. Darren Drake makes a good steak on the grill. I feel like we need some chicken on the grill. I'm your guy. Yeah. And then, well, you got to invite Alan on one day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. I'll definitely come out there and hang out with us. We, we I'm get a big down guy now. You're going to need a lot eat. extra. Oh, that's, that's no problem. That's no, that's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. You have a great senior season. Thank you. Good thanks luck for in Fordham on, on Saturday. Thank you. Y'all have a nice day. Chris Brown's been our guest, Niners senior offensive lineman uh, from right here in Charlotte, Vance High School, back with Coach Lambert. More Goldmine Live coming up next, the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event, and now is the best time to buy. You ready for this, Junior? Yeah, I think I can handle it. No pressure. That's just my favorite boat. Boom. <laughs> Make summer go right with Ford, America's best-selling brand, and get our best deal of the summer. 0% financing for 60 months on F-150. During the Ford Summer Sales Event, get 0 for 60 plus 2800 cash back on select F-150s at your Carolina Ford dealer. Welcome back to the Student Union on campus, Goldmine Live. We're joined again by head coach Brad Lambert. Want to again thank Chris Brown, senior offensive lineman, joining us uh, on the show. Also, Al Wallace, uh, our newest member of the broadcast team, is uh, with us here today as well. And, Coach, um, I know you're talking to some folks while we're talking to Chris Brown, but one of the things he was telling us late in the, uh, in the interview was how much he likes to get out there and grill the guys that on this team that could cook a little bit. If you... Have you been able to have some uh, some lunch with them yet? Yeah, we, we get together every now and then. The problem is when I have them over to the house is just the volume of food <laughs> that you have to have. <laughs> so, you know, Ange, my wife, it gets a little dicey for her. You know, when I tell her the linemen are coming over, especially the O-line or the D-line, then it gets a little, it's a little chaotic because they, uh, they can go through some food, that's for sure. But uh, they enjoy eating and, and they, they appreciate good food. So yeah, I always like that. Chris, a good one. Vance High School, he's, uh, he's played awfully well for you. He has. Uh, he's been a, a mainstay for us, a local guy right here in Charlotte, played at Vance. Uh, you know, he's been a good recruiter for us over the years. He's just been a, a good ambassador for our, our university and our program. And uh, the one thing I love about Chris is, you know who's walking through the door every day. He comes through with a great attitude and that smile, and he's ready to go, and he's going he's gonna to keep everybody – you know, uh, alive and, and moving good. And so uh, that's what I just appreciate about him every day. He's, you know, he, he makes mistakes like the next guy, but he's, he's always got a really good attitude when he shows up to go to work. And I really appreciate that. And set to graduate here in, in December. So we're proud of that. Uh, he's done a good job academically. And he's actually trying to get two degrees before he gets out of here. So uh, he's had a good plan. And you know, he's been on point. He's grown a lot. He's matured a lot. And that's really, you know, when you look at the Brandon Banks, all the guys that have been here before you, Larry, Austin, all those guys, and you watch them go through your program. And, and uh, that's what you want for them. And, and, you know, Chris is a good example of that. Show up, work extremely hard, take care of your, your academic side. And, and uh, you know, a lot of good things can happen for you. Well, we're more than halfway through the first show here. We haven't talked about it yet, so I know some folks are, are interested and they want to know your quarterback situation. It's week one, Fordham on Saturday, and uh, right now on Monday, which is the day off you guys, it, it's a work in progress, right? Yeah, we're uh, looking at all those guys. Uh, you know, uh, Hassan Clues had a good camp. Uh, he's a guy that's played a lot for us. Uh, 
he's a fabulous, fabulous person. And, you know, there's nobody works any harder than Hassan does. So, and he's had a good spring, had a good camp. Uh, Chris Reynolds is a guy that, that came here redshirted last year, uh, had a really good spring and felt good about him coming out of the spring. Uh, so good competition there. Evan Sheriffs is a guy that transferred in and has uh, been with us all summer. He's done a really, really good job of, you know, assimilating into our team and becoming a part of our team and be becoming a good teammate. So uh, he's, a, you know, is, is really doing well with that. And he's had a good camp. He's been hampered a little bit. I missed a few practices with a hamstring injury. Um, but he's back now practicing. So uh, we'll, we'll go through and, uh, you know, make a game time decision. Um, you know, and, and announce it then, uh, you know, go from there. Yeah, you know, and I, I got to watch a little bit of practice on, on Friday and, and watching them compete out there. You really got three different styles of quarterbacks. Uh -huh. You know, we know what Hassan is. We've seen him. Uh, he, he can run uh, with the best of them and scramble and, and throw on the run. You, you've got, you know, Reynolds, who little undersized at 5'10", 5'11", but, boy, this kid's got heart and guts, and he's not afraid of anybody. And you look at Sheriffs, the you know, 6'3", 6'4", prototypical kind of pro-style quarterback. So you've got really three different options you can throw at people. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a good problem to have. Uh, and, and first and foremost, they're just, they're just fabulous people. They're just guys that, you know, I trust them, and that's the key. Uh, and they're just, they, they show up every day and work extremely hard, uh, and they take care of their, their – business off the field in the classroom uh, so hasn't been an easy process by any stretch because they're all competing extremely hard and a guy like Brady Pope you know when Evan was down a little bit Brady Pope come in he's got a fabulous arm he's an athletic guy he's he's another guy that you know he's pretty big for his age and so he's mature physically uh, he's really been the guy that's had to pick up the system he and Evan uh, you know because they you know Evan was really behind you know and hadn't been here and Brady hadn't been here so uh, but they're, they're all doing well they're competing extremely hard and I've been really proud of how they've handled the whole situation coach schematically how have they had to adjust to a, a new system all three Hassan's really the one that's had to adjust because we're a little bit different offensively you know um, we've always been a fast pace up tempo uh, type of offense and we're a little bit different than that now so uh, you know Hassan's probably the one that's had to adjust the most uh, and he's done well with it. So I've been proud of the way he's adjusted and being up under the center some, being in a huddle some. So, um, you know, I, I think they've all done a good job of adjusting to it. Of course, Shane Montgomery's done a good job with them, you know, you know, coaching them and teaching them and taking the time to teach them and having a good relationship with them. So uh, it's been good. It's, and they help each other. Uh, that's the, the fun thing for me is to watch them interact with each other. They're – they're excited for each other when somebody throws a good ball or they complete a good pass or they make a good decision. You, you hear them out there. They're really encouraging to each other, and that, that speaks to what kind of people they are. And, you know, it, it's all about the team and the 49ers, and I think that's the key for all of them. When, when you look at, you know, last season going forward to this year, that was one of the things you wanted to address. And, and, and another one was the kicking game, and you brought uh -huh. a, a young kicker in, uh, Jonathan Cruz. And to tell us about him, there's some competition for that job, too. But here's a guy that uh, uh, from Cartersville, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some players from Cartersville before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you're excited about him. Yeah, Jonathan uh, had a lot of opportunities to kick the ball in the end zone last year. Their team was fabulous. I mean, I think, I think he kicked off 80 sometimes. I mean, they scored a lot of points. And he's come in and had a really good camp. I'm excited about him. He's been here all summer. Uh, he's had a really good camp. He's got a, a big leg. He's not a big guy, but he kicks the ball a long way. And been really pleased with him. Uh, he's really done a good job. Uh, so it's been that's been a real positive for us. Now he's got to do it in the game, you know, when the pressure's on. And we try to apply pressure to him in the game. And as I tell him all the time, if you can't handle me when the, the stadium's empty, how are you going to handle it when it's sold out for Fordham? You know, you've got to be able to, you know, prepare yourself and train and one day at a time get a little bit better so when the pressure is on, then you don't have a drop off. So I think he's ready for it. I'm excited to watch him. He's got a good look in his eye. I've really been proud of him. Uh, Kyle Corbett's behind him. Uh, and Kyle's had a good camp. I uh, give, give Kyle a lot of credit. He's, he's doing a little of everything for us. He's, he's kicking field goals. He's kicking off. He's trying to win the punting job. Uh, so he's doing a little of everything. And he's, once again, the type of guy you want to be around. He's competing extremely hard. Uh, and so he'll be backing up Jonathan going into the game.
Staying on the kicking game, I think that's uh, one of the three phases of football that's often forgotten. I spent 10 years in yeah. the NFL running down on kicks. Uh, talk about those guys who may be backups, the two on the depth chart, three down on the depth chart. How important it is to teach the culture of special teams and, and what that means to a football game? It's huge. Oh, it's huge, as you well know. And I look at a guy like Henry Segura. You know, Henry's a, kind of a backup linebacker for us, but he's going to be probably in the top five fastest guys on our football team. I mean, the guy's just got a lot of ability, and, like, he's that guy that's on all the specials, and he hasn't played in the game yet, uh, but his he shows up every day on fire, man, and, and so we're excited about watching him play uh, on the special teams, whether that's kickoff or punt or punt return or he, he lobbied me for a long time to be the punt returner you know he did it in high school and he's actually pretty good at it uh and he really but he's got a lot of value he's a long 6'2 body that can really run so he, he brings a lot of value to our football team but guys like that that's the guys you're talking about that you're excited they he redshirted last year and he's just a, a guy that i think can really impact the game because as you guys know special teams they're all impact plays. They're all third down plays. You know, money down on defense is, you know, it's a critical down. Well, every time there's a kick involved in the game, it's a, we call it a money down. This is an impactful play. And, you know, if you can block a punt, you return a kick. I mean, your, your, your percentage of winning the game go way up. So I think those guys are really important. And Charlie Skolaski's done a really good job with our special teams. And we ended up in a lot of categories in the top two or three or first in the league last year coming out of the season. It was a real – high point for us uh you know the one area that we didn't do well was the field goal kicking aspect of it and hopefully we've addressed that uh we've got to you know iron out our punter situation uh, we've been evaluating those guys hard all camp and we continue to do that and we'll name somebody here toward the end of the week we're, who we're going to jog out there first whether it's jackson van sickle kyle corbett cameron dollars a guy that we're looking at punter he's a wide out on our team who punted in high school i'm letting him do a little punting so I'm looking for a guy that's really consistent and, you know, every punt, you know, he's going to give us an opportunity to to down the ball and, and have an advantage in the net punting uh, because it's real critical. The hidden yardage in special teams, you don't see that stat much, but it's a big stat for us because there's so much yardage in there. If you return a kickoff 100 yards, that's 10 first downs your offense doesn't have to make. So, you know, things like that. We have a new rule uh, to kick off return. It's going into place this year along with the redshirt rule. You know, we have a kickoff return rule where now you can fair catch the ball anywhere back there and it's going to 25. If you fair catch it, say, on the 30, it's going to be on the 30. But if you fair catch it on the goal line, it's coming to the 25. Okay. If you fair catch it on the 10, it's coming to the 25. So that's another piece that strategically how people are going to use it. Uh, watched Colorado State play the other night. and Coach Bobo made the comment that uh, he played quarterback for us at Georgia. So always kind of keep up with him and Colorado State and what they're doing and and he made the comment that they weren't going to change anything they're doing. They're just bringing it out. So it's going to be interesting to see how that rule, you know, affects our game as well, people being able to fair catch it and get it on the 25. And whoever does so win the punting job is going to take over a guy that yeah. might have been one of your MVPs last yeah. year, and Arthur Hart, who was really fantastic yep. uh, last season for the Niners. We'll take a timeout. We've got a couple more to get, so we'll take a timeout right now. Back with more Goldmine Live right after this in the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event, and now is the best time to buy. You ready for this, Junior? Yeah, I think I can handle it. No pressure. That's just my favorite boat. Boom. <laughs> Make summer go right with Ford, America's best-selling brand, and get our best deal of the summer. 0% financing for 60 months on F-150. During the Ford Summer Sales Event, get 0 for 60 plus 2,800 cash back on select F-150s at your Carolina Ford dealer. Welcome back to Goldman Live, everybody. With the uh, head coach Brad Lambert and Al Wallace, the uh, Niners getting set to take on the Fordham Rams this coming Saturday, seven, uh, 6 o'clock kickoff uh, on campus here at Jerry Richardson Stadium. Uh, coach, we talked a little bit about you know, your quarterbacks, your kicking game. How about defense? Uh, you return uh, Benny LeMay. He was preseason all-conference USA and um, one of the top returners. Now he's a junior, had that great freshman season. He's from outside of Orlando and uh, you know, one of your leaders on defense. Yeah, DeLuca, you're, you're talking about Ben DeLuca. Yes, you said Ben what, LeMay. What yeah, I'm you sorry. said LeMay, but Ben DeLuca, uh, he's a returning guy. He's played a lot of football for us, been very productive, uh, had a good camp. Uh, he's, a, he's worked, once, once again, he's a guy that he puts in a lot of extra time to, to really 
hone his craft and become a better football player. He's a guy that you see a lot in the football office. He's watched a lot of video. Um, and so he's, he's a guy that's a leader for us back there. He's really, really, you know, been so productive on the back end. and He's played a lot of football. So we need for him to have a great year uh, on the back end. Uh, he and Ed Rowe, Ed, you know, Ed's a senior. Uh, Quake Gibbs is back there at safety. He's another older guy. So a lot of experience back there. Uh, at the safety position. And even A.J. McDonald's, you know, he's going into his fourth year. Uh, so there's a lot of age at that position in the middle of your defense, which we like. And so expect those guys to make a lot of calls for us and make sure we're in the correct coverages. You know, to go along with a great secondary, I'm a defensive lineman. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the defensive line a little bit. Transitioning to a 4-3 defense, mm -hmm. uh, how's that transition been for some of those guys that were outside linebackers that are now with their hands on the ground rushing from the edge? Yeah, really, the two starters for us at the end now, Al, were basically one and two at the at the banded outside backer position. You know, Alex Smith, I mean, uh, Alex Highsmith and, and Tyreek Harris, you know, are our two ends now. So it's really gotten both those guys on the field. Uh, and then Timmy Horn inside. Uh, Tyler Fain's a guy that's a fifth-year senior. Uh, Tyler kind of did it the old-school way, didn't play much his first three years, started as a redshirt junior, now will start as a redshirt senior. Uh, so those guys, all secondaries are better with how well you play up front. It's the best pass defense is a pass rush, as we all know. And so it's critical how those guys play up front, and we have experience there, and we have what I think are impact play guys up there up front. You know, uh, Tim Horn's. You know, a big guy, he's a 310-pounder that's, you know, played played a lot last year for us. And so he's going into his third year, his second year of playing for us. So uh, we've got to continue to develop depth there, uh, whether that's Ben Jacks or Antoine Shaw or Michael Holmes. All those guys are playing in for us. And, and we've got a guy like Chris Phillips who's playing tight end for us. Uh, we're using him some on defense as well. He'll play it, be a two-way player for us. So. Uh, Played a lot of D end in high school. Then he went to junior college and played tight end. So we're looking at him, you know, in that third down critical situation. Do you have a guy when you can rush forward and get home and makes it easier on everybody if you don't have to blitz them all? And so we're looking for some impact plays out of those guys up front. On your defensive side, too, you know, Juwan Foggy, who came here, you know, he was a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And you moved him to linebacker, now he's moving up again. He's been a, a big part of that defense last year and, and will be again this year. Yeah, he has. And, you know, that was a transition going into last year we weren't sure about and just really took off on us last year and played well. And so he's entering his fifth year. And so it's another old guy for us on defense that he, he's got a chance to make some impact plays. And then you got a Darius Irvin and Henry Segura behind him. So... Uh, you know, you feel like that you're pretty pretty decent there at the, at the uh, star position and, and letting Juwan kind of, you know, make some plays off the edge and in coverage and different things for us. So he's done a good job. We need him to continue to, to you know, progress at a high level. We'll take our last break, come back, touch on a little bit of the running backs. I mentioned Benny LeMay, but you have three really good running backs. Uh, you got some great wide receivers coming back and some newcomers as well. Plus, we'll get a, a couple of thoughts in on Fordham, uh, a team that's coming in here. Uh, Fordham out of the Patriot League, a four-win team last season. New head coach coming from uh, Yale. We'll talk about that coming up and wrap up the show. The uh, first game coming up at 6 o'clock on Saturday against Fordham. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event, and now is the best time to buy. You ready for this, Junior? Yeah, I think I can handle it. No pressure. That's just my favorite boat. Boom. <laughs> Make summer go right with Ford, America's best-selling brand, and get our best deal of the summer. 0% financing for 60 months on F-150. During the Ford Summer Sales Event, get 0 for 60 plus 2,800 cash back on select F-150s at your Carolina Ford dealer. Last segment of the show back here at Goldmine Live. And we get ready for the opener against Fordham University. Niner football back this season, 6 o'clock on Saturday at home. And uh, against the Fordham University Rams back with head coach Brad Lambert and Al Wallace. And, uh, you know, coach, we, we went to break talking about um, touching on some of the wide receivers and uh, the running backs coming uh, into the season. And I know you're excited about your three running backs. Of course, Benny LeMay leading the way. Um, but, uh, you know, Calvin Camp is the third-string guy. He's going to see some time. And Aaron McAllister played awfully well for you last year. 
That's some pretty good depth at, at running back. It is, and it's something that we had to address and make sure, and I've really been proud of Calvin because he's, he's given us a lot of good depth. Uh, there's a very athletic guy. We can utilize him out of the backfield a lot, and he's a pretty physical runner. Uh, he's not as big as the other two guys, but uh, he has pretty good vision and good patience. Of what I've really been proud of him this August is he's really finding his way as a patient running back and seeing holes and seeing things. So, I think it's been good for him to, to be in that room with Ben LeMay and AMAC. And, and so I feel like we've really got some good depth there, uh, you know, at, at the running back position. At the wide receiver position, you know, Victor Tucker's really come on. Uh, he'll start for us Saturday. Uh, he and Warpe and uh, Mark Quattlebaum. So uh, Vic's a very, you know, he's a Miami Carroll City guy. He's a very uh, accomplished receiver for a young guy. Uh, he's, once again, he'll be one of those guys, Al, that has to, you know, catch the speed of the game early because he hasn't been in the game but he in high school played against some really good players as you're well aware being from down there Miami Carroll City's playing at the highest level and the best competition so I think that kind of gave him a leg up a little bit coming in here and and uh, he's really had a good spring and a good August so encouraged to see what he can do uh, Tyler Ringwood's a guy we took out of Buffalo New York's a junior college transfer is a big physical wide receiver who's gotten here this summer and is really adapting to our system. So Tyler's a guy I think you'll see out there. Um, Rico Arnold is a guy that uh, we brought in out of Athens, Georgia, that I really am excited about. He just got here, but Rico's a pretty long wide receiver that's extremely athletic and can really run. So I'm excited to watch him. I'm excited to watch Cameron Bent, who may be the fastest player on our team. He should impact us on special teams once again. Uh, but excited to watch those guys impact the team and get involved in the offense and, and see if they can uh, create some big plays for us. New offensive coordinator, Shane Montgomery, what is he bringing in now? I know uh, at, at practice a little bit, you guys have actually gone in the center a little bit, uh, changing things up, might uh, utilize the backs more coming out, catching out of the backfield. What can fans expect to see a little differently from your offense? Well, I think that's probably the biggest thing, you know, the utilization of all the players uh, trying to spread the ball out and push the ball down the field a little bit more. Uh, play action, being up under center. Uh, we always want to run the ball. Uh, that's just who I am. We're going we're gonna to always have the ability to run the ball. I don't think any level of football, you have to be able to establish the line of scrimmage and run the football and set everything up from there. And The thing I love about Shane is just the balance. Uh, he's always had balance in the offense, and that was a big thing when we interviewed him that we talked about. I want to I want to have good balance. Uh, and I tell our team all the time, doesn't matter what you do in life, you got to have balance. And, and playing offense or defense is the same thing. You can't blitz every snap or they'll get a beat on you and beat you. You can't play zone every snap or they'll get a beat on you and, and beat you. So you have to have balance. And I think that's the number one thing Shane's done is really have good balance on our offense and utilize other weapons that we do have. And whether that's Calvin or Ben LeMay, you know, Ben LeMay is he's really, really good catcher of the football out of the backfield so I'm excited to see him and and uh, you know we've got a new rule going in we talked about a little bit at the break where the whole blocking below the waist uh, rule they're really adjusting it this year you can't block below the waist past five yards past the line of scrimmage so you know your screen game it changes your linemen as they go downfield they can't cut defensive backs uh, your H backs or tight ends when they're coming you know across the ball they can't they can't cut somebody uh, below the waist so We've had to work on that. Uh, you know, you have to really be in front of a guy now to cut him, and you can't be beyond five years, uh, five yards. So that's going to be another rule that's an impact in our game. So as you utilize different different players in screen games or, or what have you, you got to make sure you're you know blocking high and in front. Fordham on Saturday, new coaching staff. We touched on that at the top of the show. Coming from Yale, uh, they got some returning players, but you know they might have a different scheme. What can you expect when, when it's, it's so much newness on an opponent like that? You're not seeing a lot of uh, in this first game. Well, you, you, the one thing you can for sure expect is a lot of energy and enthusiasm. You know, um, they they went up the went up and down the field on people last year at Yale and, uh, when coach was the offensive coordinator. I mean, they do a fabulous job job offensively moving the ball. So we're gonna have to be on point defensively. Um, They've got a tight end on their team that's as good as we'll play against this year. He's, uh, you know, he's on watch lists and projected NFL uh, draft picks. So he's a fabulous player. So as we talked early in the show, Fordham has good players, and our guys got to be on point. But uh, there'll be a good energy coming in here, and and they were successful uh, where they've been. So uh, we're going to have to be on point and and make sure that 
that we take care of business and we have the right attitude when we show up at the game and, and our energy level is high because that's what it takes is, you know, like I said, we've got limited opportunities in this game, so you, you, can't, you can't afford to miss one. And, and so we gotta, you know, we got to show up game one and play extremely hard and give our fans something to get on their feet about. Coach, how important is it to come out fast, three home games in a row, get this crowd behind you? What is the identity play on offense that you come out with that you want to establish the tone? Well, you know, you want to be able to, to really establish the run game and then, and then put your play action into work. But I think Ben LeMay is going to be a real key for us uh, in game one and, and how he plays and how he establishes the line of scrimmage. Coach, thank you so much. You wrap up the first show. Al, welcome again. Uh, welcome, thank buddy. you for joining us. It's going to be good. going to be a fun year, Coach. I'm excited. Can't wait. Uh, good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Coach it. Brad Lambert. That's going to wrap up Goldmine Live. Don't forget, kickoff 6 o'clock on Saturday. So long, everybody.